This week I'm going to show you guys something that looks more difficult than it actually is to do. Uh, and what it is is an image that's broken into strips and as I scroll those strips come together and it forms a whole image. And if I scroll up it breaks apart. So you can see here that these strips are moving at different speeds, they're moving in different directions and they come together and form an image uh, that looks perfect. There's nothing about it that's glitchy or separated or, or weird. It comes together uh, as if it were one whole image the whole time and uh, to be honest it's still in strips. The fact that it looks this good is just uh, the result of doing this the way that I'm about to show you and it is much easier than it looks. So I'm gonna head back to Muse and here's the version that I have not really built yet. So this image that you see here is one whole image. I dragged it onto my canvas. It's not in a rectangle, it's not a fill of any kind, it's just a picture. It's a picture that I dragged onto my canvas and I've sized to, to be a moderate height, not too tall for the screen, not too small. Uh, and I'm now going to slice it up. So I want to show you guys how to do that. I'm going to give you guys some keyboard shortcuts that go along with this that make it a lot easier and much, much quicker to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by turning this image into little strips. Uh, and in doing that, I'm going to be cropping the image and copying and pasting it, uh, but without messing up the alignment, because I want these things to snap together uh, in such a way that once the strips come together, it doesn't look like anything but one whole perfect photograph. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that, I'm actually going to do a keyboard shortcut here. I'm going to hold the Command key on my Mac, which is the Control key on a PC, and I'm going to put my cursor over the handle on the right-hand side of the selected image, and I'm going to drag to the left. And you'll see that because I'm holding the Command key, I'm changing the bounding box, which is cropping the image. It's not actually moving the image or scaling the image. Uh, it's a little keyboard shortcut in Muse. So hold Command or Control and uh, grab that handle and slide it on over. Uh, here's the part where procedurally you can go wrong. So you want to be careful here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this image. I'm going to hit Command C for copy or Control C on your PC. And now that I've copied it, I don't just want to hit paste, because if I hit paste, it gives me a strip in a seemingly arbitrary position. Uh, I don't want that, because that's not going to snap together real nice. Uh, what I actually want to do is hit Shift, Option, or Alt, Command or Control, and the letter V. So if you're on a Mac, again, that's Shift, Option, Command, V for paste. Uh, if you're on a PC, it is Shift, Alt, Control V. Uh, and what that is is paste in place. In fact, if you go up to edit, you can see here there's an option called paste in place and it's got the keyboard shortcut right next to it. When you choose paste in place, it pastes the object that you copied in exactly the same position as where it was before. So now I have two of these right on top of one another. And now it starts to get cool because I'm going to go back to holding my command key or control on the PC and I'm going to grab the handle on the left hand side and I'm going to drag it over the right. I'm crossing over itself and by doing that what I'm effectively doing is I'm recropping this away from the original cropped bounding box so we now have two of them so I'm gonna do the same thing again I'm gonna hit copy and then uh, if you're not a fan of keyboard shortcuts I'll go up here to edit choose paste in place hold the command key and grab the left handle and drag it over to the right and there we have that one so I'm gonna copy paste in place again and I'm gonna grab the left handle drag it to the right I'm gonna make this one a little wider copy paste in place grab that handle and pull it over and I'm gonna do one last one and drag that handle over so by dragging the left handle over itself and leaving the right handle in place I'm keeping my edges aligned and by keeping my edges aligned I don't have to worry about alignment in a separate step now you might see these thin vertical uh, black lines if you're on a black background or white lines if you're on a white background. Uh, go ahead and preview in the browser though and when you preview in the browser those lines will probably go away. If they don't go away feel free to nudge whatever needs to be nudged to make them go away. Uh, for instance if I had a line here I would grab these two and nudge them to the left to get rid of that line. That happens to me some of the time some of the time it doesn't. It's inconsistency within Muse and it's not your fault. So now that I've got these strips created I can start playing with the scroll effects to determine how they're going to slide into place. So the first thing I want to do is select all of them. I'm going to go and select all of them and take note of the fact that these are all close to the top of my page. 
but not quite at the top of my page. They're just close, so I have a little gap here. Uh, you'll want to do the same if you want to do this in as few steps as possible. So now I'm going to head over to the scroll effects panel, and I'm going to make sure I'm on the first tab where the motion checkbox is, and I'm going to turn on the motion checkbox. Now the next thing I want to do is set the scroll speed to 1, 0, so that way it scrolls up and down but not side to side. The next thing you want to do is set your key position to 0. And that is setting the key position for all of these strips to 0. Uh, you want this number to be the same for all the strips. That's why we're doing it now with them all highlighted. And what this is going to determine uh, is best visualized over here on the canvas, where you can see the little T handles that are sticking out. Uh, however tall this T handle is that's sticking out of each of your strips, that is how far from the top of the browser the strips are going to come together and form the entire image. So the further these are away from the picture, the further the picture will come together from the top of the browser. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, play with it a little bit and you'll see the result of that. And when we preview this in the browser, I'll, I'll mention again how, how that manifests itself. So. Now that I have that set, I just want my bottom numbers to match my top numbers here. Uh, one, zero, and then one, zero at the bottom. Uh, but the thing is, the final motion is, is not going to continue slipping and sliding the, the slices or the strips. Uh, we want them to stop moving once they come together at the key position. So I'm actually going to change these down here to zero, zero, which means freeze. So once they come together, they're going to freeze together. They're going to kind of glue together by being at zero, zero. Uh, so at the top, again, that's one, zero to start. But we're going to we're going to mess with those in a moment. So once you've got the, the stage set, so to speak, uh, you can now click away on your background. And that, that'll deselect all of the strips here. And now you can start going one by one to make them come in at different speeds. So what I'm going to do is this first one here. I'm going to have the first one come in at a speed of three times. I'm going to have the second one come in at a speed of, I'll say, five times. Third one, four times. So I'm just kind of randomizing these because I don't want it to be uh, too generic looking. I want it to be really dicey. Six, and then the last one, I'll do three. Perfect. Now the next thing that you can do is, uh, you may have noticed in my example, I had some of the strips coming from the top and some coming from the bottom. So I'm going to go back to the first one, and you can see here that there's this little arrow under initial motion, and that shows that it's going to scroll upward on the page like any normal object would as we scroll down. If you'd like it to go in the reverse direction, click on this button here, and it will go from top to bottom instead of bottom to top. So I'm going to make every other one go from top to bottom instead of bottom to top. So half of them are going to come from the top. The other half are going to come from the bottom. I hope that makes sense. So I have top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top. And all the speeds are randomized as well. So let's preview this in the browser and see how it looks. Looks pretty lame, right? <laughs> the picture is just kind of already glued together. Now the reason for that, again, is if we select all these, these T handles at the top that represent the key position determine when everything will be glued together, when the top of the browser gets to the point where all the strips are glued together and locked in place. Uh, I have that happening at the very beginning. It's at the very, very top. So what I want to do now is I want to scoot all these down. I'm going to scoot them down. And the further you scoot them down, the more time there will be that the strips are sliding in. If you're too close to the top, the strips are going to be almost together. And if you're too far down, then you're going to have to do a lot of scrolling before we can even see them. Uh, so I'm just going to go to a happy medium. I'm just going to go down here. And if your page isn't very long, make it longer. And by making the page longer, we have a little more wiggle room to scroll. Now I'm going to preview it in the browser again. And now I see one of the strips. And as I scroll, here we go. They're coming together. And boom, they're locked into place. So once we've reached that key position, once we're to the point on the page where those T handles were, uh, they, everything locks into place. And because we set the speed after the key position to be zero, 0, they stay put once they're locked into place. Um, if you don't want them to stay put, if you want the picture to scroll uh, off and up the page, uh, you can select all these again. And instead of having this at a speed of 0, you could have it at a speed of 1. So once it reaches the key position, they'll all lock together and scroll together at a normal speed of 1. So here we go. They're going to lock. Boom and it continues scrolling at a speed of one. So if you need to continue flowing from one picture to the next to the next, that's probably the way you'll want to do it. 
So I hope you guys like this tutorial. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun one. It's a cool one. It get, hopefully it'll get your wheels turning and now you know that shortcut with the command or control key to crop an image. Uh, so if you guys like these tutorials, I've got more coming soon. Please subscribe if you haven't already and uh, hopefully I'll have another one for you next week.